Hello. So in this lecture, we will see closure and equivalence set. So this is the outline of this lecture. We will see what is a closure. Then we will see an algorithm for closure of attributes. Then we will see what is a cover and we will see equivalence set. So in this lecture, we will see the definition and how to find out all these things. This will be applicable only, only when you learn the next lectures. We will follow all these things in the next lectures. So closure. So we have already seen what is the closure of a set of functional dependency. We have already defined in the previous lecture. So if you have a set F with a, with a set of functional dependency on a particular relation schema R, if you want to find the closure of F, that is, if you want to find which all other functional dependencies can be that can be inferred from F, if you find all the F uh, functional dependencies that can be inferred from F by applying Armstrong's inference rules, then we get the closure of F, that is F plus. So we have already defined this closure of a set F of set of functional dependency is a set F plus of all functional dependencies that can be inferred from F. So we apply Armstrong's uh, rules into this set, uh, F and we determine all the functional dependencies that can be inferred from F. We call it as F plus. So it is difficult to find the F closure. So it is better to find attribute closure. So attribute closure is applicable in many cases. So if you want to determine the candidate key of a particular table, then if you determine the attribute closures, you can easily get this. So you will learn how to find the key in the next lecture. So attribute closure is an important thing. So attribute closure shows which all attributes are dependent on a particular attribute. So how to determine this attribute closure? So we have to determine each set of attributes x that appears as a left hand side of some functional dependency in f. So we have to take x from any some uh, from some left hand side part of the functional dependency, then determine the set of all attributes that are dependent on this x. So if we take a student table, if we want to find admission number closure, we have to find out which all attributes are dependent on admission number. Then we will get the admission number closure. <coughs> so for each set of attributes x, what we do is, we determine the set x plus of attributes that are functionally determined by x based on f. So x plus is called the closure of x under f. So x plus is called the closure of, uh, closure of x under this f. So there is a simple algorithm to determine this x closure. So this is the algorithm. Here the input is a set f of functional dependency on a relation schema R. And we have to determine the attribute x closure. So x may be a single attribute or maybe a set of attributes. So which will be a subset of this R. So what you have to do, this is the algorithm. So we have to assign this x to x plus. So x value, x will be definitely there in the x closure. We have no, by reflexive rule, every attribute will be uh, dependent on itself. So x will be added to x closure itself. Then we add, uh, we assign this x closure to old x closure value. Then what you have to do is, we have to take each function dependency y to z in f. We have to take each functional dependency from f and we have to check whether this y is a subset of x closure. So if y is a subset of x closure, then what you have to do is we have to add the z part to x closure. So x closure will become x closure union z. So this is a, these two are two sets. So it is a set operation, set union operation. Then we take each functional dependency and we will continue this. And when this becomes x plus equal to old x closure, uh, this condition is satisfied, we exit this. So this is the algorithm. So we will see this algorithm with the help of an example. So this is our algorithm and we will take this example. R, A, B, C, D, E and we have a set F with the functional dependencies A, B to C, B to D, C to E and D to A. So this is our F. Now we want to find the closure of something. So we will take as uh, AB closure. We want to find the closure of AB. 
So this is x. A, B, x is A, B. So what is our first step? We have to assign this x value to x closure. So we, we have added this x, uh, A, B to x closure. Then second, is, second step, we have to uh, assign this A, B to old x closure value. Then what you have to do, we have to take each functional dependency. So we have to take each functional dependency. So first functional dependency is A, B to C. Then what you have to do, we have to take the X part. X part is A, B. So we have to check whether, sorry, uh, we have to check the Y part. So Y2 is set. This is Y2 is set. So we have to check whether Y is, y is a subset of X plus. So AB is a subset of X plus. That's what we have done here. Or superset. AB is a superset of AB. So what we have to do? We have to add the C to X closure. So we have added that C part to ABC. Now X closure beca becomes ABC. Now what we have to do? We have to take the second functional dependency. B to D. So B to D. We have to check whether B is a subset of ABC. So B is a subset of ABC. So what we have to do? We have to add this B to ABC. So we have added this B to ABC. No, sorry, B to D to X closure. So X closure becomes ABCD. Then we have to take the next functional dependency that is C to E. So here C is a subset of ABCD. So we have to add the Z part to ABCD. So X closure becomes ABCDE. Now we have to take the last functional dependency that is D to A. D to A. D is a subset of ABCDE and A. We have already added A, but it is a union operation. You can simply perform this union operation. So it becomes ABCD itself. So this is the algorithm to determine the X closure. So this means AB closure means ABCDE. So ABCDE, all these attributes are functionally dependent on AB. So this is the meaning of X closure. So AB closure means these attributes ABCDE. These attributes are functionally determined, uh, functionally dependent on AB, or we can say AB functionally determines A, B, C, D, and E. So this is the algorithm to take to find the X closure. Then uh, we, uh, this stops only when X closure equal to old X closure. So again, this will go here. Since all the functional dependencies have been taken, then again it will go here. X closure value will be assigned to old X closure. This will be again repeated, but we have already added all these attributes. Nothing will happen in the second step. Then when we check X closure will be equal to old X closure, so this will be exit. So we will see another example. Here we have a relation class with this set of attributes. Class ID, class, uh, course number, instruction, uh, instructor name, credit hours, text publisher, classroom and capacity. So these five functional dependencies are there in this table. Class ID to this set of attributes, course number to this attribute, course number instructor name to these two attributes, text to publisher, classroom capacity. Now if we want to determine class ID closure, if we want to find the class ID closure, what we have to do, we have to add class ID to X closure, so class ID will be there. Then what we have to do, we have to take each functional dependency, we take this class ID so class ID is a subset of class ID. So what you have to do, we have to add all these attributes to that closure. Now if you check, we have to take the next functional dependency, course number. So course number uh, is already in that class ID. You can do this example. You can write this in the paper and see this. You can take this class number, you have to add this credit number. So credit number is al already included in that closure. Then you have to take next functional dependency, course number, uh, instructor name. It is a subset of X closure. So what you have to do? You have to add text and classroom. It is already there. So you continue all these things. So you will get the closure. And this class ID closure is equal to class. So this means, what does this mean? Class ID closure determines all the attributes in that relation. So it means that class ID is the candidate key of that relation. So it is a candidate key of this relation. So we can take course number closure. So if we take course number closure, you can see this course number. This is a functional dependency. In this functional dependency, course number is not a subset of class ID. 
So FD1 will be removed. Then we take this function dependency, course number is subset, credit hours will be added. Then here we go, course number, comma instructor name is not a subset of course number, comma credit hours. So this not, will not be added. Then text is not set, the subset of exposure. Classroom is not a subset. So if we take course number, closure, you will get only course number, credit hours. Then you can check for course number and instructor name closure. You will take, get these attributes. So if you check this, one attribute will be missing in this course number and instructor name. Uh, I think one attribute won't be there in this closure. So this is not a candidate key. Over here, class ID is only the candidate key. There may be other candidate keys. If you take some other closure, if you get all the attributes, then that will be a candidate key of that uh, relation. So this is a closure. Then next is, uh, we have to see what you mean by equivalence of sets of functional dependency. <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> we have to determine equivalence of sets of functional dependency. So if we have a functional dependency f and if we have another functional dependency g, they may not be same. But we have to, we have to check whether f and g are equivalent dependencies. So in order to determine this equivalency, we have to define something else. It is known as cover. So a set of functional dependency f, we have a set of functional dependency f. It is set to cover, it is set to cover another set of functional dependency g. If every functional dependency in g is also in f closure. So if you want to find the cover of a functional dependency, what you have to do? If you want to find cover of g, what you have to do is we have to take f closure and you have to check whether g is there in f closure. Then we can say f, this set is covered, f is covered, uh, f is set to cover g or g is covered by f. So that is if every dependency in g can be inferred from f. This is the meaning. So if you have two sets f and g, and if we, if we want to check whether G covers F or if we want to determine F covers G, if we want to determine F covers G, what we have to do is we have to check whether every function dependency is there in F plus. So we have to determine F plus and we have to check whether all the function dependencies are in G are there in F closure. If you want to find the reverse, then you have to take G closure and you have to determine whether all the functional dependencies of f is g plus. So alternately, we can say g is covered by f or f is f covers g. So this is covered. This is important. So a set of functional dependencies f is to cover another functional set of dependency g. If every functional dependency in g is there in f closure. Not, it may not be in F, but it may be in F closure. So what do you mean by this equivalent set of functional dependencies? So if F and G are two sets of functional dependencies, their values may be different, or their functional dependencies may be different, but their two sets might be equivalent. So what is the definition for equivalent set of functional dependencies? So two sets of functional dependencies, G and F, are equivalent if both the closures are same. If you have two sets F and G, if both their closures, F closure and G closure, that is the functional dependency closure of F is equal to is equal to functional dependency of G, then F and G are equivalent sets. Or we can say equivalence means that every functional dependency in G can be inferred from F and also in the reverse manner, and every F functional dependency in F can be inferred from G. Both will hold. That is, every functional dependency in G can be inferred from F and every functional dependency in F can be inferred from G. Or G is equivalent to F if both the conditions are true. That is, G covers F and F covers G. So, we have to check whether G covers F and F covers G. We will see with an example how to find the equivalent set. Then you will understand what you mean this equivalent set. We will see this example. We have two sets of functional dependency f and g. f we have a to c, a c to d, e to a d, e to h, and in g we have a to c d, e to a h. Now we have to check whether f covers g, f and g are equivalent. So what we have to do is we have to check whether 
f covers g and g covers f. So we'll see how to do this. First, check g covers f. We have to check whether f is a subset of g closure. This set is a subset of this g closure. So what we have to do is we have to take each functional dependency in f. We have to take each functional dependency in f. So first we will take a to c. This is a first functional dependency a to c in f. Then we have to determine a closure. Rather than going for function dependency closure, we can go for attribute closure. We have to take a closure in G. We have to take a closure in not in F. We have to take in G. So a closure in G means a closure will add a c d will be there and no more attributes will be added. So a closure in G will be a c d using the previous algorithm. So which c is there? So this c is there in uh, when we get the A closure, we will find that it is ACD and here this C is there in this ACD. So we can continue to the next functional dependency. So this is covered. This means F1 functional dependency is there in G. Then we take the second functional dependency AC2D. Now what we have to do again, we have to perform closure, AC closure. We have to get AC closure in G. So AC closure, we have to take each functional dependency A. A is a subset of AC, uh, AC. So CD will be added to this. So ACD will be there. Then E to H, next functional dependency, E is not a subset of this. So AH won't be added. So ACD, so this D is there in this ACD. This means ACD is covered in this G. Then we have to take the next functional dependency next is e to ad we can take this also because e to s both the left hand side are same so e to ad and e to s can be taken together we have to determine e closure here e closure in g so e closure in g so we have to take e closure will be ah then acd eh will be added so it will be e a c d h according to the previous algorithm you can simply take this closure this will be e closure will be a c d h you can find that H is there in E A C D H. So this means this functional dependency, e, these two functional dependencies are covered by G. This means G covers F. Then we have to check whether F covers G. On the same thing, second we have to check F covers G or G is a subset of a closure. What we have to do? We have to take each functional dependency in G and we have to check whether it covers in this. So what you have to do, you have to take A to C D, then you have to take A closure in F. You have to take A closure in F. So if you take A closure in F, it will be A, C will be there, A, C will be there, A, C, D will be there. So A closure in F will be A, C, D. So C, D part is there in this A closure. That means this functional dependency is covered by F. Then we have to take the second functional dependency E to H. Then we have to determine E closure in F. So E closure will be E, A, D, then C will be there like that. H will be there like that. You will go on add. So you will get E closure as E, A, C, D, H. So this is that part. A, H is there in E, A, C, D, H. So this means this functional dependency is covered by F. So if we take these two cells, so this means F is covered by F covers G. And uh, also G covers F. So F and G are equivalent sets. So here G covers F and F covers G. So F and G are equivalent sets. So this is the way to determine whether two sets of functional dependency are equivalent or not. So this is the thing we have seen this lecture. We have seen closure of X. Then we have seen equivalent set. Uh, sorry, power. And we have also seen equivalent set. Thank you.